Good morning, Pastor Tyrone P. Jones, Church for the City, Yuma, Arizona. The national ma uh, mask mandate that was for all airplanes and public transportation was set to expire Monday the 18th. The CDC extended it until May 3rd, but on Monday, thankfully, a federal judge struck down that, that mandate. Her ruling now gives airlines and airports and mass transit systems and even people like you and I to make our own decisions about mass at any threat of, of a disease uh, for each of us. But this speaks to a greater narrative that there's only a small percentage of Americans who say they trust the federal government to do what is right. This is not a vital concern just in regard to our government, but for the very future of our democracy. I'm going to refer to an article in The Atlantic uh, a few times over the course of a, of a few days in this video, but it was written by a guy named Jonathan Hade, who is a social psychologist and best-selling author. In his latest article, he discusses the shattering of all that had seemed solid, the scattering of people who had a community, uh, re referencing brilliantly the Tower of Babel, and what is happening not only between red and blue states, but within the, within the left and within the right, as well as within universities and companies, professional associations, museums, and even families. Among the many things depicted is how we can tear down the things that bind us together, that being extensive, uh, that's like the social networks of high levels of trust, strong institutions, and shared stories. We've seen all three of these weakened really easily through social media. We can like what we do and share what we want, and in doing so, we can trigger emotions to establish one's truth or denigrate the view of another. He noted that in 2013, social media had become a new game in which creating viral content or demeaning content with which we disagree became the norm which increased the volume of outrage one had against a social network of people or against an institution or against someone's life story. Why do I say this threatens our democracy? It's here where I most agree with Hayde, who writes that a democracy depends on widely eternalized, internalized acceptance of legitimacy of rules, norms, and institutions. When citizens lose trust in elected leaders, health authorities, the courts, the police, universities, and the integrity of elections, then every decision becomes contested. Every election becomes a life and death struggle to save the country from the other side. How should you think biblically about this? The Apostle Paul goal should be ours. He said, first, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Secondly, we do this by measuring every truth claim against the unchanging, unchanging truth of Scripture, like we see in Hebrews 4.12. And then third, we have fulfilled the mandate that whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence or anything worthy of praise, then think about those things. That's Philippians 4.8. We don't become part of the hate crowd, demeaning crowd, or destructive crowd. We take what is being said into examination. We examine all things in the light of God's word, and we commit to that which is pure, lovely, true, honorable, and worthy of praise. As we think biblically, we will act redemptively. We should make speaking the truth in love our constant goal. In response to the vitriol and divisions of our day, God does not need us to be cultural warriors, but for us to be cultural missionaries. God bless you.